Erechin daf tezvav, today's daf is a very famous daf, especially for those who learn Hilchas Lashon Har, Chavaz Chaim. Many of his halachas are based on today's daf and a little bit of tomorrow's daf. The Mishnah says that if somebody's a Oynas, somebody rapes, he has to pay 50 shekel. He took action, he pays 50. Yet, if he spoke with his mouth, he's Moitzi Shemran, his new bride, he says that he didn't find Psulim and he brings Adim to say that she was Mizana, he has to give double amount, 100. Even though he didn't do a physical act, he just spoke with his mouth, he has to pay double. You see from here that Lashon Hara is much worse than a physical act. And don't say that the reason why he pays double the fine is because he intended to kill his new bride. Because had we believed him, they would have killed her. Because the Torah says specifically, Ki Shemra. The reason why he pays 100 is because he's Moitzi Shemra, not because of his intent to kill her. The reason why he didn't go into Eretz Yisrael is because of the Lashon Har of the Miraglim. And not because of this concept called Nisma Awesome. Everybody, so to speak, has a cup. And when that cup fills with Averis, that's when HaKadosh Baruch Hu punishes. And maybe that's when the Miraglim spoke, Lashon Har, the cup filled up, and that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu punished them. Because it says specifically, the Avera, this Avera, Zeh, that's why they got punished. The Gemara says, if the Miraglim spoke Lashon Hara on Eitzim Avonim, on stones and on trees, and they got punished so severely, so if you speak about a person. And there's a sheet that Rav Papa says that the Miraglim actually said about HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ki Chazak Hu Mimenu, that the Kananim are stronger than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu can't go in there and take his things out. And maybe that's why they got punished? No. The reason why they got punished is The ones who spoke about the land because of the Lashon Hara, that's why they got punished, and not because they said that Kosh Baruch Hu is weaker than the Knanet. The Gemara brings that there's ten Nisyonis. HaKosh Baruch Hu, his patience was tested ten times. You see by the Yamsov, when they went into the Yamsov, Klai Yisrael complained, and then when they came out of the Yamsov, it says, that they, they, there, was, there was a Merida. They rebelled against HaKadosh Baruch Hu because they said, we're going to come out, and as we come out, maybe the Mitzvah will also come out. And the question is, they just saw such an unbelievable nest, the greatest nest of Kriyas Yamsov, and they're going to think that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to kill them at the end with the Mitzvah. So Taisus explains, and everybody holds like that as well, that when Klai Yisrael went, went into the Yamsov, they came out of the Yamsov on the same side that they came in. They just came in, they just came out a little bit further down the shore. So they were worried that the Mitzvah were tracking them on the shore, and as soon as they'll come out, the Mitzvah will catch them. Because had they gotten out on the other side of the Yamsov, it would have been a much stronger question against Klai Yisrael. Akash Baruch told the Yamsov, because Klai Yisrael is complaining, I want you to spit out the Mitzvah onto the shore so they see that their enemy is dead. So the Yamsov said, what, you just gave us fish food. Don't be an Indian giver. He gave us supply for our fish, and now you're going to take it away. So Kesh Baruch said, I promise you, I'll give you one and a half times the amount. And so it was later on in history, Sisra, his soldiers were there. Instead of 600 Merkavas, they had 900, which translates to hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of soldiers. And they got really hot, and they went into the Nachal Kishon, and then came a big wave and swept them all away. And that's how Kesh Baruch paid back the water. And, and at the end, the Yamsov spit out the Mitzrayim so Klai Yisrael could calm down and see that their enemy was dead. The third and the fourth time that Klai Yisrael tested HaKadosh Baruch was by Mara, by Lenu Am Al Moshe, and Rufidim, by Yachnu, Rufidim, by Mayin Lishtois, by Yarev Am Al Moshe. The fifth and sixth was by the Mon. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Klai Yisrael, don't go out, and they went out on Shabbos, and then he said, Al Tuisiru, don't leave over, and they left over. Who left over? Dosim Avir, and you see that even if two people in Klai Yisrael commit an Avera, the whole Klai Yisrael gets punished for it. Is a concept of Arvos, Kol Yisrael, Arvim, Zilazah. By the Slav is number seven, Veshitachim Asir Abbasar, and then Vahasafsu, Vashar Bekirboi. Number nine is the Eagle, and number ten is the Miragel. The Gemara says that the tongue lays flat, not like all the other Eivarim, and it's surrounded by, its, by the jaw, by the teeth, by the, by the lips. And you have to be really careful with that Eivar that Akash Baruch gave us. Says the Gemara, 11 things that happen to somebody that speaks Lashon Hara. It's as if he's a kaifer. And as the Chavaz Chaim explains, many of these things, or maybe all these things, are talking about a person that's a Baal Lashon Hara. Not somebody that just spoke Lashon Hara once or twice, but somebody that became part of him. When it's part of him, he becomes a kaifer. He gets tsaras. And he's going to be embarrassed together with the snake. Because 
all the animals they kill, but they benefit from the kill. They eat it, but a snake doesn't benefit from biting. And so too, a human being has zero benefit from talking. There's no hana from, from the mouth just to speak. And he's like the snake, and he's going to be mavuyish together with the snake. His averis grow to the shamayim. He is roi for skila. In other words, he deserves to be stoned to death. Hakush Baruch says about this person, I and him, I can't live with him in one in one roof, under one roof. In other words, who's going to win here? Hakush Baruch is going to expel this person from his world. And the Gemara says it's like an arrow coming down from Shemayim and the Gehenim coming down from the bottom. His Averis are greater than the three Chamurais from Ritzicha Gilarais and Shikhas Damim. Says the Gemara kills three people. The person that says it, the person that hears it, and the person that was said about. Rashi explains, talking about Rechilos, so Reuven says to Shimon, hey, Levi hates you. So Shimon and Levi get into a big fight and they kill each other. Then the Goy Ale Adam, the children of those who were killed, go and kill Reuven, the one that started the whole thing. Loshon Hara kills from a distance, and finally, Mavis V'chaim V'yad Loshon. You could do wonderful things with your tongue, you could learn Torah. On the other hand, you could do terrible things, you could cause death, and aggravation through Lashon Hara. So what do you do if you speak Lashon Hara, says the Gemara, if you're Tamad Chacham, you should learn Torah, and if you have Ma'aretz, you become an Anav, according to one man in the Gemara, since it's too late, once you speak Lashon Hara, learning Torah can prevent you from speaking Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara is even if you say, in a derogatory way, if somebody asks you, where can I light my cigarette? Where can I find the fire? And you say, oh, go to that place. They're always partying, they always have barbecues, and you say in a derogatory way, says the Gemara, that could be Lashon Hara. And we're going to see tomorrow a little bit more about Babi Tlasa and the halachas of Rabbi Yossi says that I never spoke in a way that I had to be concerned that the person would be behind me. I never looked backwards to see if he's listening because even if he's listening, he wouldn't hear something derogatory. So tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem, we're going to get into more this, this halacha of Ba'abit Tlasa and Ba'apov. Have a wonderful day.